Hey there everyone, Hatayshi here, back again with another video and in this video, I have a question for you, a scenario based question. So hear this out very carefully. Now I have a requirement that there is a website on which some people come in, they write something into the form and submit that information. Now also sometimes people come in and we just need to read from our, let's just say SQLite database and there is a lot of read that comes into the picture and that's it, nothing fancy at all. A simple database, just two things are being done on the website, but the traffic is heavy. Let's just say we are receiving a traffic which consumes 400 or 500 GB of network bandwidth. So no fancy stuff, but the bandwidth is high. What is going to be your solution for the infrastructure perspective? Now before we move forward, write the answer of this question into the comment section and also hit that subscribe too. Yeah, I get it. This is a million dollar question that what infrastructure should we support? Should we move into AWS cloud or Azure cloud or should we even move into the cloud or not? The thing which separates the pro users and a just getting started user is just the experience. The amount of scenarios that a pro user has handled makes him a co pro coder or a pro user itself. And this is a classic scenario where I want to bring your attention that surely I'm also a big fan of AWS, of GCP, of Netlify, Varsal and pretty much everything. But saying that all solution is on the cloud and just on AWS or something is kind of a cookie cutter solution, which should not be your first perspective. This video is not a hatred video on AWS or something because I love them, I use them. But I don't use them for every single of my scenario which I receive from the client side or for the personal use. It's almost similar that these days people say that, hey, problem of every solution is Web3 and cryptos and decentralized. It doesn't work like that. Every problem is unique and every problem solution should also be unique. Now these days people think that it's all about the big giant cloud, but it is not like that. We recently moved into one of the client into some not so famous these three cloud provider, but some different cloud provider and it is working absolutely fine for us. And also who are the same guys who are sponsoring this video. So a big shout out to Hostinger for sponsoring and helping me to make more such videos and crash courses. So a big shout out to Hostinger and thank you so much for that. Now coming back onto the question, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense should be your always priority in picking up your cloud provider or where you're going to host your website. Every website is unique and every demand of every website is also unique. So judge it very, very carefully and control all these matrices as well. Let me walk you through with one of such example. So here I am on one of the very famous website, which is Varcel, and you can notice here that the bandwidth that they allow into their fair usage policy is 100 GB. You can also move up to 1 TB in the pro account. And after that, they're going to charge you additionally for per 100 GB bandwidth. Now, another such similar provider which might come to your mind is Netlify. Now, the Netlify also in the starter package, they give you 100 GB per month of the bandwidth. And after that, $20 per 100 GB of the bandwidth. So of course they are looking absolutely good and when you are just getting started and you see that ah, 100 GB is too much for me, this seems obvious solution but eventually you are going to receive some of the client where it doesn't fit right. Okay, so these two are there and definitely there are many such solutions which are absolutely similar to this. Now let's move into some of the gigantic territory, AWS, GCP and Azure three of the most prominent and dominating cloud services. How much is it going to cost on AWS? Uh, that's even a $20 million question because on the AWS, it's not really simple to figure out how much the bill is going to cost me. First and foremost, you need to get familiarized yourself with the terminologies. I just need a machine, a virtual machine which is running in your system. What do AWS call it? Instance? What does GCP call it as? Compute instance? What does Azure call it? And terminologies are all scattered around and different. Or what they are going to call a machine which is heavy in the GPU centric or what they are going to call the machine which is compute in intensive. What they are calling their hosting services or their what they are calling their bandwidth. What do they call their load balancer? The terminologies is all around the place and you need a very specific skill or you need to bring somebody in who knows all these terminologies. The variables are too much in the cloud. Of course, in some scenarios, we need control of all these variables. Like for example, companies like Hotstar, they would love to control even more variables than AWS provides us. There is compute optimized, there is memory optimized, there are T2 machine, there are G5 machines, uh, there are lambdas, there is API gateway. So there's a lot of variables running around in the cloud. Another thing that you should always keep in mind while calculating the cloud pricing is 
provisioning pricing. Cloud doesn't charge you how much you are using. They promote it very well, but actually they charge you based on how much you are provisioning. So if you have spin off a machine which is having, let's just say, 20 GB of RAM, and you are just using 1 GB of RAM, you are not going to be billed for 1 GB of RAM. You are going to be billed for 20 GB of RAM because that's what you have provisioned. Now, this is nothing bad. This is how their pricing works. When you just move into that, they show you we are going to only charge you 6 cent for an hour. But now calculate the 6 cent of hour because you are running so many machines in a month. So just calculate that how much uh, is going to co cost you when you are running it for 700 hours or 800 hours. So eventually the bill loads up. Now, if this was not enough, the pricing changed like frequently, like that is crazy frequently how they charge they change their pricing. Now, AWS recently changed their pricing again, and this was probably like 60th time that they have changed or probably more than that since the AWS service launched. Now, again, don't get me wrong. This is nothing wrong. This is how everything works into the cloud infrastructure. The pricing is extremely difficult to understand. And not only that, the pricing for each of the service is different. For example, the cloud functions or the Lambda function that you spin off are going to cost you differently than spinning off a machine because you don't really understand that when they are charging you for the hardware and when they have just introduced the service and they are charging you for that service itself. It is a very thin line there. And if all of that was not enough, it's actually a post paid service. So you just spin off your machines and things. Whether you use them or not, you just get the bill at the very end of it. And there is not a kind of a fixed bill that I'm going to get. It's always and always like fluctuating bill. Either you need to become an expert in that or you need to bring in the expert. So coming back onto the point. No, I'm not scaring you off from the cloud infrastructure. I'm just putting all the variables so that you can make better decision. Now, in this similar exact scenario, when we came up with the scenario where we didn't need it, that kind of a juice to run our website, the basic one, but our traffic was a bit heavy. That's exactly I would like to bring your attention to something different. Oh gosh, look at these. The AWS, this Microsoft has got the entire page for pricing calculator and you have to select all of your variables and they are going to be adding up and then it says how much is it going to cost you. Similar calculator exists for AWS, which is even much more crazier than that. And then we have this insane calculator for the cloud. Now for big of these organizations and big project, it makes sense, but we just want to host a website. Now, this thing brings us to our sponsor of this video, which is Hostinger. Now, Hostinger is one of the such cloud provider, which people says, hey, they don't provide any cloud services. It's just for domain, but it is not. It was very useful for us in one of such scenario. And thank you so much for sponsoring the video and bringing this topic up. So if you're going to go up into the servers, you can actually grab a pretty decent and nice server from them. I don't usually go for VPS one because it's too basic for me. I would love to go for something like uh, this one. So this is costing me 630 per month. And what I absolutely love about this is no surprise bill. I am just renting purely, purely an infrastructure. Of course, I don't get the CI CD pipeline, but I can configure that. But what impresses me is the bandwidth, 2 TB of bandwidth per month. Now, of course, there is an I amount here that hey, network ports and speed obviously depends. You can go and spin off a better server if you need that, but I'm in control of all that. And you can have all these root access and everything. So it's like I'm renting truly in hardware and I can just uh, spin off a database on that. I can spin off an Angular, React, whatever I like. I can also spin off a CI CD pipelines uh, using Jenkins and mark that up with my GitHub and everything is just up and running. Surely this is a little bit of extra work. AWS just gives it out of the box, but they're going to charge you every month for that. If you do that once up here, and your website demand and is requirement is like this, I think you will not be surprised by the bill. And this is exactly what we used in one of our client, a mega client for that. And that's what brings me up with this topic that, hey, I should make this topic and share all of this with you. And uh, Hostinger says, hey, we would love to sponsor you in the YouTube as well. So big shout out to them. Now also, not only that, I actually came up with a deal with them. So since they're sponsoring, helping us, you should also go ahead and check out the link in the description section. At least go ahead and create an account, whether you buy it or not that's different thing if it makes sense to you but go ahead create an account there and uh, use the link in the description section now as a final word the thing that i want you to take from this video is that there is no cookie cutter solution the reason why so many of the cloud provider exist and so many of the services exist because there is no one solution for all saying that everything is going to be solved in the cloud is going to cost you a lot and that is not a good approach 
evaluate the parameters, evaluate the variables that how much is it going to truly cost, how much is going to be truly my effort going into that and is it stable for the long time or not. Don't think that this cloud provider is not known too much in the industry, that's why it's bad and this is known too much, that's why it's good. It's never like that. Every need has a different solution, so always take care of that.